Hey everyone, welcome to Plants and Politics. I have an update to share about one of Trump's capital insurrectionists. It's time for an episode of Where Are They Now? Matthew Bledsoe was arrested. Patrick Montgomery was in court. Jonathan Manapa will stay in federal custody. No, I don't take responsibility at all. So Mark Simon is a 50-year-old Southern California man who was arrested on January 28th for his part in the domestic terrorist attack at the Capitol. Simon was seen on video inside the Capitol. He actually took the video himself. I mean, he was seen on surveillance cameras as well, but he shared his own video on social media. And he was heard in the video saying, quote, in the Capitol, baby, yeah. So, I mean, as, as I say that, I all I can think of is Austin Powers. But anyway, um, he then turned the camera on himself because that was when he was videotaping everything else going on. So you could just hear his voice. But then he turned the video on himself and he was seen and heard saying, quote, 2021 Donald Trump. Um, you could also see in that portion of the video shattered glass like a window or or glass on a door behind him. So he clearly knew that this was not a peaceful protest. But in addition to sharing his January 6 photos and videos on social media, he also uploaded them to his blog where he wrote, quote, peacefully storming the Capitol. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately for Simon, the FBI was able to identify him and arrest him because of that blog post and because of the photos that he shared. And unlike some of the Capitol insurrectionists, Simon was held in jail for 90 days after his arrest because he was on parole when he went to D.C. And so he therefore violated his parole conditions. So I'll explain more about that in a minute. But Because Simon didn't commit any acts of violence that day, he didn't personally damage anything at the Capitol. He was charged with the four misdemeanors that we've seen in hundreds of these cases. You guys probably know them by heart by now. Say it with me. Entering a restricted building or grounds, two counts of disorderly conduct, one count of parading or demonstrating in a Capitol building. As with others, Simon pleaded guilty to the parading charge. So I was expecting another total slap on the wrist, you know, go home, do whatever the hell you want. Um, That didn't happen. I'll just give you a heads up, but it's still not great. But prior to his December 7th sentencing hearing, Simon wrote to the judge and he told the judge that he was under the influence of drugs when he traveled to D.C., and entered the Capitol. He told Judge Amy Berman Jackson that if he had been sober, quote, I probably would not have made the decision to go to D.C. Simon's attorneys also told the judge that he had been battling addiction for decades and that he relapsed after his divorce. And that was in 2016. They said that because of his relapse, he lost his business, Um, He lost his wife, obviously. He spent a good deal of 2020 homeless living in his car. They also allege that he was selling Trump hats throughout Huntington Beach, California, that, you know, to not just pay his bills, but also to support his drug habit. And Simon echoed this in his letter. He, He wrote to the judge and said, quote, after my divorce in 2016, I relapsed. Since then, I've made a string of poor choices, supporting Donald Trump and attending the January 6th State of the Union address. I mean, wasn't a State of the Union address, but okay. Um, He also noted that he had entered a treatment program after he was released from jail. That was in May of this year, and that he has since remained sober Um, that he graduated from the program in September. And he wrote, quote, although I cannot take back my action that day, I have learned from them. I have learned that drugs and alcohol will always ruin my life and anyone around me. And now that I am truly clean and sober, I have clarity and completely realize how wrong my actions were on January 6th. You know, this would sound like a story of redemption, right? It would be like his mea culpa almost. But prosecutors pointed out 
that he has violated his probation on multiple occasions and that he's had numerous run-ins with the law. He's had numerous convictions in the past, including one conviction for assault with a deadly weapon. So no, yeah, not buying it. And, you know, as we always say, when Trump sends his people, he's not sending his best, right? They're drug addicts, they're violent criminals, and some, I assume, are good people. Anyway, weak ass prosecutors with all of this in his past were still only asking for 45 days in prison. His attorney was arguing for probation. <laughs> in the end, though, Judge Jackson gave him only 35 days in prison and a $500 restitution fee. The guy has previous convictions for assault with a deadly weapon, and he gets a BS 35-day sentence. Are you kidding me? Like I keep saying, when this happens again, and it will, these pansy-ass judges and prosecutors are going to have blood on their hands. This is 100% going to be their fault. This is ridiculous. This guy will learn nothing. Nothing. I don't buy his, his answers. I think that he's learned how to game the system. I think he's learned all of the, the you know, psychological treatment speak, and he knows exactly what he needs to say to get himself out of trouble and to make people think that he's turned things around. He's, you know, he's changed his tune. He's a better man now. He recognizes his, the error of his ways. I don't buy it for one second. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and listening. Take care. I will talk with you soon.